Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in. Today is gonna be kind of like a part two from my previous video that I uploaded about sampling and chopping up your samples. So this is kind of like a part two on how I go about sampling when it comes down to my melodic samples and also my drum breaks. But before we jump into it, if this is your first time visiting this channel, I'm Malo Beats, and in this channel, we love talking about sampling, chopping up samples and showing and sharing with one another our workflows on how we create sampled bass music. So if that's something you're into, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. And also, if you guys find value in this video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. That's a very good way to support the channel. So let's jump right into it. So on the previous video, if you guys have not checked it out, make sure you guys see, uh, check out the previous video. Uh, we go over how I chop up samples and make them work with the tempo that I want it to be at, which in my case, I like to slice up in quarter notes and then I'll pitch up or pitch down my samples. Uh, that's cool and that is one of my go-to methods, but the problem when I do that, since I'm pitching up or down my samples, uh, I'm starting to interfere with the original key of the sample. And when you start pitching up or down samples and, and you start messing with the key that it's originally in, what happens is if you later on want to start adding other elements of music, kind of like a guitar, a bass, pianos, or anything else, it's going to be a little tough and it gets a little complicated to match the key. Why? Because it's pitched and it's no longer on that original key. Now, what we're going to do right now is I have a loop right here that we sampled on that previous video. This is the original key, the original tempo of that loop. Let's say I do not want to mess with that original key and the original tempo of this loop that I sampled. I want to keep it the way it is so I could then later on add probably some guitar on top, some piano or some strings without having too many issues with key shifts. So in this case, what I'm going to do is sample this drum break that I have. And this drum break is going to be a different tempo from my sample, but we're going to make them work together and match without changing the key of the sample. Right there. Let's name this drum break. Hit do it. Go to edit. And once we go to edit, uh, right here we have a one bar drum break, a uh, one bar loop from that drum break. What we're gonna do is let's get a perfect loop right here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set our start and end point. Gonna adjust the end point right here. Okay, there's two bars right there. I'm gonna hit process, discard, hit do it. So we have a two bar loop right now. Now this beats per minute or this tempo right here is not the same tempo as our original sample. Let's play the original sample so we can hear that. It seems like it's a lot faster. And these drums are gonna be. So these drums are a lot slower. So we have an option right here. We either pitch the sample down and match it to the drums, but what we're gonna sacrifice by doing that is gonna be the original key that that sample is at. So that's gonna get things a little more complicated if you guys want to add instrumentation on top of that later on. Our next option would be grab this drum break. It's not melodic, this is percussive, and we match the drums to our sample. You guys can pitch up drums or pitch them down. It's, you guys can get away with it. It's not like, uh, you know, since it's percussive, you're not really messing with the key of the drums. So now that we've decided that we're gonna pitch the drum break to match it to our sample, what we're gonna do is, uh, this is a new feature right here on the 10 point, what is it, 10.6 update. Uh, this is really cool that you can do this now. Uh, right here, if you hover over to the second page right here on the sample editor, you have this option right here that says from BPM. So when you hit from BPM, once you have your loop selected, my case is two bars, which is eight beats. If you guys only have one bar loop selected, it's gonna say four beats. In this case, like I said, it's two bars. You guys can set to match. If you hit match, it's gonna automatically pitch the sample break, the drum break, to match the tempo 
of your original melodic sample that we got, which is crazy. <laughs> you could do that with the push of a button. Now it tuned it up automatically to pitch 95 beats per minute. Now it's, it's, these drums are tuned up to 3.53. So they're pitched up. Now, if we hit these drums alongside with the original sample, they should be in sync. That's really cool. Now, we kept the integrity of the sample, of the melodic sample. There's no key changes. It's in its original key. But the drums, we've pitched them up. Now, the drums don't sound like if they're drastically pitched up. They still sound like drums. That's really cool. You guys can go ahead and throw that in your sequencer, and there's going to be a loop for you. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you guys want to take it a step further, now that we're in sync with the tempos, we can go ahead. What I would do is I would go to Chop, and on chop, I will go to BPM and I will chop this drum break up since it's already matched up the tempo. It's going to be in quarter notes. So it's going to slice it up. The reason why I'm slicing it up again, you guys don't have to do this, but the reason why I want to do this is because I like to kind of create my unique uh, rhythm with the drum breaks that I'm sampling. I don't really have fun when I'm just looping things. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not my vibe. Go to shift hit convert hit do it go to main now if we go to uh, track number three we have our drum break right here that we just chopped up let's lay that down Now, the reason why I wanted to make this video and kind of have this like a part two is because I'm telling you, there is times where you want to keep the original key of your sample. You guys can still chop up the sample, put it into 16th notes or quarter notes and rearrange your sample, but it will still stay in the same key. We do not want to pitch it up or down. Instead, what we did in this case, we grabbed our drum break and we pitched that up or down because it's not going to sound like the key is off if you're pitching drum breaks because they're percussive. Now, I'm sure there's so many other ways you can go about this method. This is just uh, the method that I use. This is how I go about it. That's why I love this. That's why I enjoy what I do, because there's just so many different ways different people create. And that's why I enjoy this channel. I just enjoy sharing my workflow and also getting feedback from you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I highly appreciate y'all taking the time to check out these videos. That's going to wrap it up for me today. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll catch you guys on our next video.